A second way of thinking that I recognize I would engage in regularly is the thought that I had made a mistake. Anybody here thinks you've made a mistake? There's a couple of people, okay. I did a workshop a number of years ago with a fellow by the name of Ray Woolham, who's an old timer on Vancouver Island. And what I liked about Ray was that he thought in different ways. And so in this workshop I was in, he asked, who here has made a mistake? And of course, all of our hands went up. And then Ray said to us, well, I want to investigate those mistakes. And he said, as a matter of fact, I want to hear about the biggest mistake that you've made in your life. And he went around the room and had all of us disclose out loud what our biggest mistake was. And he wrote it on a flip chart paper at the front of the room. And I still remember there was a young woman in, in that group by the name of Rebecca. And when Ray got to Rebecca, she admitted that her biggest mistake was losing her virginity to a complete idiot. Ray liked her answer so much, he asked if he could make that the title of his next book. <laughs> so if you see that title out there, you know where it came from. And then Ray said to Rebecca, can we talk about this a little bit? And she said, oh, I guess. And he said, would you mind telling us about the night you lost your virginity? And she did. And she told the story about being on a date with a man by the name of Alan how uh, they had gone down to a fancy restaurant in downtown Vancouver, candlelight dinner, wine, beautiful ambiance, great food, wonderful conversation, had a delightful time. And then after dinner, they walked the seawall of Stanley Park in the moonlight, they held hands and they told stories and they laughed. And about midnight, they went back to Alan's place and made love. And Ray said to Rebecca, did you enjoy yourself that evening? And you could tell by the way she told the story that it was actually a very fond memory for her. And then Ray scratches his head a little bit and he says, so exactly when did you discover he was an idiot? And she said, about six months after that. And he said, that's my point exactly. He said, at the time that you made the decision that you're now calling the biggest mistake of your life, did you think it was a good decision? And she said, yes. And then he pointed to the list at the front of the room where the rest of us had our mistakes declared out loud. And he said to the rest of us, at the time you made the decision that you're now calling the biggest mistake of your life, did you think it was a good decision? And we all agreed that it was. And Ray was even more emphatic. He says, you actually made the best decision available to you with the information, skill, and knowledge that you had in that moment. And then he said to us, do you think everybody in the world thinks this way? Do you think everybody in the world thinks they make mistakes? And we just says, well, yes, of course. We just assumed everybody thought as we did. And then he said, well, let me tell you about when I did this workshop with a group of First Nations people. And he said, they were all young, under the age of 30. And he said, I did exactly the same exercise I did with you. I asked them if they had made a mistake. All the hands went up. I said, let's find out what the mistakes are. I wrote it on a piece of paper at the front of the room. And then he said, I did something different with that group. And what I did was I said to them, we're going to take a break. And during the break, I want you to get on the telephone. I want you to speak to an elder in your community who speaks your native language. I want you to find the word for mistake in your native tongue. And I want you to bring that word back to the group. And so off they went. About 15 minutes later, they all reassembled in the room, and Ray said, OK, what have you got? And guess what happened? No word for mistake from any of them. He said, the closest was the Sioux tribe. And the Sioux tribe has a word that roughly means, sometimes when I pull the arrow back in my bow, the arrow doesn't go where I intend. He said, it was a straight observation that sometimes we don't get the outcomes that we anticipate. But what was missing was the shame, the blame, the guilt, the fear, the heaviness that I know that I carried around with that word mistake. When I presented a few years ago to a, a group of people, there was a fellow in the audience who says, Ted, I'm in the motion picture industry. I'm in the television industry. We don't accept 
expect people to do things perfectly. And if they don't do it the way we want, we simply do another take. We call it a missed take and then do another take. If you've read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Reese, he says that mistakes is simply an agreement that we've entered into in our culture. Ray, who led the workshop, said, mistakes is simply an idea. It's a mental construct. And then his question was, does that idea, does that construct, does that agreement serve you? And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, you might want to enter into a different agreement. And as a result of that workshop with Ray, I came to the understanding that I did make the best decisions available to me in that moment. And when I would have an outcome that I didn't anticipate, it informed me that there was something else that I needed to learn or wanted to learn. And I set about figuring out what that was so that I could get what I wanted. But what I let go of as a result of that workshop was all the heaviness, the guilt, the blame, the shame that I had been carrying around.